Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from the Ionic Academy, back with an updated version of a tutorial we did in the past about data tables. So today we will use the ngx data table package once again with Ionic 4 in our application to create a cool layout uh, that can present your data from JSON into a cool table. So let's do this. Um, I already started my blank new app to uh, make this a bit faster and then I installed the package from AdSwimLane ngx data table and you can also take a look at the according github repository if you want to quite a lot of uh, watches and stars here uh, actually um, some parts of it don't look like they're really uh, or maintained anymore i'm not completely sure but all the other packages i inspected were also not really that good so this one is really um, something that you can customize in a lot of ways you can check out the demos here uh, and it's pretty cool because you see like the demos here whatever it is and then you can also immediately open and dive into the source code so the documentation is pretty great in terms of examples this documentation isn't that great but i think we can live with that so what we want to do is we're going to create a basic example for our application which looks currently pretty empty so we can close this already and then get started because first of all we have to import the um, according css and this is already a bit different than the previous version so now we can simply import it from the package um, we will pick this up from the node modules folder automatically just like the ionic stuff in here and then we need the index css which is like the main css these two are two themes that you can apply. Uh, can we actually dive into that folder? Nope, we can't. Um, seems great. Um, perhaps we can look at it in swim lane, uh, ngx data table, release, themes. Um, there's actually a third theme I just see. Let's import that one as well. Um, so that would be material CSS. Interesting. I don't know what we're gonna see. And finally, the icons are used once we toggle a column um, to get like the little icons uh, when you sort them. So that's all we need in here for now. Also, we need some data and I basically copied the data from the repository. Maybe I can show you the link. Uh, it's that one. Yeah, you can see the link. Really great. You can simply dive into the assets data company and then get the content of this file and create a new file in your assets folder. And because uh, with Angular, I think since Angular 6, we can load this data directly from a JSON file uh, and don't need the HTTP client module. We also need a little addition to our TypeScript configuration um, because we need two keys. Let me copy them over so I don't make any mistake. So we need the resolve JSON module, which allows includes modules imported with JSON extension. Uh, and the second one is also, um, I don't know exactly why, but we need it. So now we can directly load the JSON data and don't need to make any HTTP calls. Then on the pages where you want to use the package, so now we are uh, really diving into it, we need the ngx data table module, just like this. So in all the lazy loaded pages where you want to use it, make sure to add it to the array of your imports. And then we can dive into this. I already created the um, basic functionalities, but haven't implemented it so far. So first of all, let's, oops, that wasn't my idea. Uh, let's import the data from, and now I need to get the path right. Um, one more folder up assets slash company json and you see we don't get any red lines so that's pretty cool and now we can use this data right here and simply say private companies equals our data and there we go um to show you that i don't lie i will also log out um, of course not the data but this dot companies but that's really a simple way to load a local json data file so Again, what learned, as we say in Germany. All right, um, I wanted to implement two things for you to um, switch the style from dark to bootstrap, but it appears we also have the material style, so we will see how we can apply this. Uh, let's set the table 
style for now to actually use material. I don't know what we can expect here. And then um, perhaps let's try to use the most basic version of our swim lane package. Can we can we maybe just dive into uh, where are the demos once again? Come on, give me the demos. There we go. Because the most basic form is really, really very simple. Uh, I, I can't find it. Let's let's just do it manually. <laughs> so what you're gonna need is first of all the not ion but ngx data table component, and this one defines how the general table looks. So in here you got stuff like the rows, which is your data. So in our case it's companies, and then a lot of more things that we can um, edit here. But for now. Maybe let's just let's just use only this one. And then you need to specify how the columns looks. So ngx data table column. And then um, first one is name. I think we can also use lowercase for this. So let's see if this already works. Let's not work with the demo here. Okay, we see the data and we see a list of data. Mm, it's okay so far. Let's use two more of these for uh, what is in our data. I think um, we had the gender and we had the company. So we save and we load once again and we should see nicely formatted uh, stuff. We can actually already sort um, or filter. No, that's actually sorting. Um, you can also supply your own functionalities, but we will not do this right now. And now, as you can see, there's no styling. We need to apply some more styling. So let's use ng class and use the table style that we created in our homepage. So that should be material right now. Um, well, it's looking interesting, I would say. It's not really what I would enjoy. And you see the rows don't have the right height and the header is a bit small and we can actually change the width of the columns. So let's prevent some of these things. So we go back and to the definition. So let's do the row height um, should be auto. And remember, if we use the brackets, we also have to supply an object and therefore we have the additional string in here. So that's the row height, um, then perhaps the header height and now I want to decode completion. Uh, let's make this 50. Interesting syntax here, Simon. And then we could also use the uh, column mode, which we should set to force. But again, make sure it is a string. So now we are not allowed to change the column size anymore. Um, you see it's taking the whole why am I still allowed to do this? Column mode is set to force, please. I'm normally not allowed to do this anymore. Well, 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 but we see that we actually have the right height for the rows. The header has a custom height. And let's change the table style to something bootstrappy. And I think that should look a bit better. So there we got a nice bootstrap style and we can still change it. That's um, actually interesting because I don't think that should be allowed with the force mode. Um, but for now, maybe we'll just keep this. Um, and let's do some more things on our table. So in many cases, I needed a button in um, the table, for example, at the end to delete, to open details, to perform some quick actions. And to do so, you can uh, simply create your own template of an ngx data table column. So let's simply name this one action. Um, let's make this not sortable because that doesn't really make sense. And then in here, we can now create our ng template that will be used for the column. So in here, we're gonna have a row value available. Um, we will have the real value of that column available. And we also need to add, I think, my hope my face is not covering it. Uh, we need the ngx data table cell 
template. So this gives our ng template the right structure for the um, actual cell. And in here, a little button. I think we should make it small to match the screen. Let's use an outline button and on click, we want to call open with the current value of the row. So let's say details. And to show that it's working, we should also dive into the open function and let's let's for now just lock out the row. So now we have added a new column at the end, which is here. We have a details button and once we press the details button, we see all the details. Um, you see, uh, we can still order this. That is a bit strange. So a few of the parts sometimes don't immediately work and you have to dive into why they are not working. So for example, this one, in my case or in my eyes, this should now really be not sortable. Um, we could add it here, but I don't think that it belongs there. Um, and there are a few more other cases when you think uh, you know how the stuff works, but it's actually not. So that is sometimes a bit strange. I don't know if we need to make it like this. Um, that's just a bit of trial and error. Yeah, actually that's the, that's the solution. So great, we could discover this. Uh, let's add a quick fix so we can change the style of our table. Uh, and this one is something we will do in a second. So for switch style, I will just use the code I have prepared. Um, I just want to switch between the dark and the bootstrap style because um, actually, actually, um, the material style wasn't looking that great in my eyes. So we will f fall back to dark and bootstrap, which are, I think, pretty cool. So that's the bootstraps theme. And, and we should use the right variable names. Uh, so you can immediately switch the theme right around to the dark mode, which is also pretty awesome, I think. So both of them look really great. Now let's do something more and uh, let's use a custom row class because sometimes you want to highlight different cells or a full row. In that case, you can use a custom row class and we will set this to false in the beginning. And whenever we press this little bulb icon, we simply change it to be true. And then we can implement on whichever row or cell we want to use it. So if you want to make it for all rows, you can use uh, use it in this place and then say row class uh, equals get row class. Uh, actually, we don't need this. Or you could also directly do it on the cells. So uh, I think that would be cell class exactly. And then uh, you could have a condition on which uh, something should be applied. So now we need to implement the get row class. And I will also uh, lock out the row once again for the class. Uh, so we see that it's called right in the beginning. And in here, we just make a little switch between if uh, yeah, the row gender is male, then uh, we will uh, add the male row styling and otherwise the female one. And if this row class isn't enabled, then we just return an empty object. And now to implement these two rules, um, I initially thought that we just go to our homepage, we add uh, a bit of styling and then everything is fine. The problem is, then we should remove the lock, I think. Um, the problem is if we now inspect the row, we don't really see uh, the styling applied here. And we also see there's nothing green or gret. But if I move this up to our global CSS right below this, and then we hit the refresh, then we see, oh, I haven't toggled the stuff. I just remember, uh, interesting. And also interesting that it's still not working. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, the problem is now that, oh, thanks for this, um, inside the get row class, uh, we're accessing this dot custom row class. And the get row class function is connected to the ngx data table, but it has no access uh, to the scope of this, so the actual class. 
and uh, we can fix this by calling bind this onto the function which will bind our um, this to the function and then allow us to access it in this place. So the difference is now that it now works. Um, I'm not sure why this package is implemented like this and it's not working out of the box because with most Angular packages this uh, already works and also with open row uh, we don't have to bind this in that place it always works. So um, maybe if you know why it's not working if you're the creator of the package watching this um, let me know. But now uh, we are able to add a male or female row CSS class so maybe we can do this now once again and check out the row and then we toggle this and we see that here the female row CSS class is added and you see all females are now in red and the males ones are in green. Um, is there anything more I wanted to show you? Actually I don't think so. Uh, we got the two different stylings which we don't see if the class is activated. The duck is pretty cool, the bootstrap is also cool and the material let's give it one more try i didn't really enjoy it so uh well yeah no no i just like the bootstrap and the dark one um if you got any questions for the package um let me know below the video or um, directly ask on the ngx data table swim lane package in here. There are quite a few issues open so that's also why I'm not sure if it is really actively maintained um, but most of the time you can get around and you also find answers in the open issues. So I hope you enjoyed this quick win today on data tables. Um, there's also the possibility of creating data tables with the angular material package. If you would like to see that just let me know below uh, and of course leave a like otherwise I won't do it. And then also subscribe to the channel, that's both of this is required in order to get me to do the Angular Material data table uh, quick win. I hope you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe, check out the Ionic Academy, my place to help you with everything Ionic, and then I'll see you inside the next video. So have a great day and take care.